If you compare prophetic speech in the Old Testament with prophetic speech in the New Testament, you'll see similarities. For example, the Old Testament prophets would say, thus says the Lord, or utterance of the Lord, or the Lord says, or the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And in the New Testament, for example, in in Acts the 11th chapter or in Acts the 21st chapter, we have some examples there of prophecy. It's the Holy Spirit says or, or speaking by the Spirit. So in both cases, people are claiming to be speaking words from the Lord. The question is, in the New Testament, how does prophecy function? And if the gift of prophecy is still for today, we have every reason to say it's still for today, Paul makes clear in 1 Corinthians 12 through 14 that these things will continue until Jesus returns, at which point we won't need prophecy or tongues or or teaching and things like that. And when he gets to the end of 1 Corinthians 14, in the 39th verse, he's very explicit to eagerly desire prophecy. And, And nowhere in the rest of the New Testament is that overridden. Nowhere does it say, well, that was for earlier. Now it stops. So just believing the word, we say, okay, these things continue for today. Well, it's not scripture. Prophecy is not scripture unless it was a prophecy that was recorded in the Bible. In other words, when the Corinthians were prophesying, Paul didn't say, now make sure you write everything down because that's going to be part of the Bible. No, they, they may have had hundreds or thousands of prophecies. We don't have any of them recorded because they were not writing scripture. And that's why when a prophet would speak, 1 Corinthians 14, others would listen, and then they would judge. They would weigh it carefully. And then in 1 Thessalonians 5, Paul says, now don't despise prophecies. For whatever reason, he had to say that. Maybe there are certain things that that seem worthy of being despised, or the people didn't seem genuine. Who knows what? He said, no, don't despise prophecies. Test everything and hold fast to the good. And make sure you don't put out the Spirit's fire. Don't quench the Spirit. So what is the gift of prophecy in the New Testament. Well, prophecy is inspired speech. It's not good preaching. It's not just good preaching. He's not saying, now preach well and make sure you you learn to preach well, because elsewhere he talks about preaching. There's another Greek word for preaching and another for teaching. And he talks to Timothy about preaching and teaching and things like that. That is different than prophecy. Prophecy would be inspired speech to speak things, reveal things that, that are otherwise not known. For example, in 1 Corinthians 14, an unbeliever comes into your midst and, and different ones in the group prophesy in the house meeting there. They prophesy and the person falls on his face. He's deeply convicted of his sin. He says, God's really among you. God's really here. Other times, prophecy is predicting future things that are going to happen. All prophecy must be tested by Scripture. All prophecy should be weighed and judged by others with prophetic gifts as well. And nowhere, nowhere in the New Testament are we told to be led by prophetic words from others as opposed to have our own relationship with God through the Word and by the Spirit. In other words, no one can come up to you and say, well, the Lord told me you're supposed to marry that person and you just have to do it. No, that's abusive and that's dangerous. But the gift of prophecy is wonderful. I've seen it in operation in my own life. I've watched it in operation in other lives. It's been supernatural. It's brought glory to the Lord. Sometimes it's helped avert disaster. So we take advantage of every good thing that God has put in the body, and we test everything by the written, final, authoritative revelation of God in Scripture.